What's going on? This is Ron Carter, and you're listening to Lead, Sell, and Scale. This podcast is really just an accumulation of my entire journey when it comes to making money online. I think I start off in the very first episode of the first season talking about selling products on Shopify and then quickly move into affiliate marketing, which is where I made my first sales, and then insights that I learned as a coach and uh, really just documenting the whole journey. So I don't really sell anything on this podcast. If I do talk about links in some of the older episodes, they no longer work. Just letting you know that right up front. Uh, If you do want to check out some free training on what I help my clients do, you can always go to therealroncarter.com. But other than that, let's get right into the episode. What's going on, everybody? Ron Carter here. And it's been a long time since I've published on this podcast. And a lot has changed, like seriously. A lot has changed in my life. And I think because of that, um, we're entering a new season in this podcast. I mean, I'm in a new season of my life. And everything is totally different. So just to be kind of candid with you, like even for this podcast episode, not really going to have too much of an intro or music or any of that stuff. Cause I'm just introducing this, this new season and every episode that I put out before, um, you know, I was learning and growing and recording the process and, but there's one thing that's different now. And that one thing really affects everything. And, that one thing is sobriety. And this is something that I, I talked about a little bit. I talked about struggling with, with drugs and, and overcoming it. But the one thing that I never really, I wasn't fully vulnerable because uh, I just wasn't ready to be. And um, so, yeah, like I was never 100% sober from everything just 100 percent clear mind and um didn't have the focus and clarity that i thought i did and it wasn't until actually getting sober for real like no weed no alcohol no nothing um and and really changing my perception of who i am because of that and and striving to be a consistent giver to to everyone in my life and, and trying to really be able to help other people um and and not think of myself and in every area that I can and be 100% honest all the time and that I really started to change how I show up to everything everything that I do I'm talking about business personal life everything and um and that's what I've been doing now, and it's been almost a year. Uh, it'll be a year of sobriety in February, and I'm recording this in mid-January, well, almost late January. And uh, so, yeah, it took like a good almost 10 solid months off of doing any business stuff just so I can really focus on myself, my discipline, my mindset, my routines, and... uh and I guess what you're hearing now is the the fruit of some of that growth. And so we're starting a whole new season of this podcast. Season one is going to be, I guess, before sobriety and season two is after. Um, and uh, I think that that's it for the intro for this episode. So what I'm going to share with you, uh, this episode is all about Really, what we're going to be talking about is sales. Um, this is what I found is my is my passion. It's like no matter what's happened in life, um, I'll, even during these 10 months that I took off from doing any business, it, it's all I thought about. And, and I thought about just like, you know, getting better and improving who I am and, and, and how I move throughout this world as a human being um, so that when it comes time to serve, I can do it at the highest level possible. Like always knowing in the back of my mind that, that this is what I'm going back to. 
and and it's what I'm supposed to be doing, but that I needed to to really improve and fix myself to be able to do that. Um, so it was kind of like two steps backward to take three steps forward, and uh, and here we are. And so I'm going to be sharing uh, some content that I created, uh, I put it up on my YouTube, but I'm, I'm putting the audio out here. Um, and what was that video about again? <laughs> I'm like asking myself, cause I like forgot just a second ago, um, even though I just had it up. Um, bear with me one second. So that's the other thing about sobriety is like, I'm not perfect and that's cool. <laughs> like I'm okay with that. Um, oh yeah. Okay. So what we're, well, what I'm sharing with you is this is a method that I found makes it like super easy to close on your sales calls. Now closing, it's not all about like getting people to say yes. It's not. It's it's about being able to prescribe your offer. And, and the only way to prescribe your offer is to properly diagnose the prospect, properly diagnose them. So that's what we're, that's what we're going to be going into in this podcast episode. Hope you guys get some value from it. Here we go. Let's get it. What's going on YouTube? Ron Carter here. And today I want to go over the most common mistake that I see people making with their sales process. I'm talking about when they're doing sales over the phone, I'm not talking about email marketing, I'm not talking about funnels, I'm not talking about selling products through links, I'm talking about getting on the phone with a customer or with a potential client um, and selling them their high ticket services, the most common mistake that I see people making. And this is one that I used to make all the time too, all the freaking time. And we're gonna get into that in this video, so make sure that you stick around. Um, this is going to be short and sweet. Uh, just here to give you guys some value today. So um, I got nothing to sell you at the end of this or anything like that. So uh, here's the thing that I used to do all the time. I'll start by sharing what I used to do and what I do now and then go into what this mistake is and how you can not avoid it when you're getting on the phone so you can start closing more deals, start bringing in customers and actually bring in customers that are happy that you sold them their service. Uh, when you do this right, even the people that don't buy from you even the people who don't buy from you are going to be happy that they got on the call with you. I just had somebody that I had a call with a year and a half ago that said no, refer another client to me like the other week. Like I haven't seen this person in, in over a year. And, and when somebody said that they needed help with sales um, to them, they recommended me and we got on the phone and you know now I'm helping this guy. Right, so this is a very powerful process that you want to make sure that you're implementing. And so, what I used to do when I got on the phone with people is number one, a couple mistakes, <laughs> more than a couple, right? Uh, number one is I used to try to sell anybody who would get on the phone with me. I'm like, you're a good fit for what I have, and and, and I would I would ask them the questions to figure out their current situation. Uh, which if you're familiar with the sales process, you're, you're aware you gotta ask questions, know where the prospect is at, right? And then it comes time for you to make the offer. And I would always just talk, 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 talk about what my offer is and what it can do for them and, and how I think it will help. And, and while I'm doing this, I'm like totally leaned in. You can tell my energy is just like, like I need you to buy this, right? And, and it should be reversed should be reversed. If I'm helping somebody, I don't need them to buy anything. Like they're the ones who are in pain, who are in trouble, uh, who need a way out of their perceived situation. They're the ones who need the thing. And, and it doesn't affect me at all if they, if they take it or if they don't take it. So bringing that energy, that neediness energy, it's, it just kills like the sales process. And so how do we avoid this? How do we avoid being needy on our calls and, and really being able to, to close with elegance and grace and, and, and to be able to do it in a way where the prospect feels like we're helping them because we really are. Um, the way that I found to do this um, and, and what I learned from, from one of my mentors uh, is we have to actually prescribe our offer to their situation, not tell them about it, not give them all the info about what it does and how it will help them, but actually prescribe it. Um, and 
So how do we do this? What does this look like? When we prescribe an offer correctly, there are a few things that have to be in place before we even get to the offer of the call. A lot of times, the close and the call happen successfully because of all the things that we did prior to the close. So when we are getting our, our prospects um, information about what they're struggling with and what they're going through, it's very important. It's very, very, very important that we reiterate the pain that they're sharing with us and, and we do it in a way that really cuts deep to them. Because a lot of times people will try to minimize their pain. So let me give you an example. Let's say that you get on the phone with somebody, or let's say I get on the phone with somebody, I use a, a solid example, um, and uh, they need help with their sales process. And I ask them, okay, so, so what's your offer? They tell me what their offer is, and I, and I ask them, okay, so how many, how many sales are you making per month right now? You know, first I ask them the price of their offer. They tell me maybe it's 3K, 4K, 3K, we'll go with 3K. And I say, okay, well, how many sales are you making per month right now? And then they say, oh, well, you know, I have a few calls booked. Uh, you know, I've been doing two or three calls a week. Um, I have three calls booked this week, and it looks like one of them is going to close. So the way I would repeat that is, okay, so you don't have any sales. That's really what they're saying. But they, a lot of people don't want to, they try to avoid the direness of their situation. Um, and we're all guilty of this. It's not just like, it's me too. This is what we do as human beings, uh, especially when we're talking to somebody that we haven't met before and, and we don't want to make ourselves sound like bad, right? So they, they won't say it that way, but, but it's still true. And so you want to like really twist the knife, so to speak. Uh, they, they reveal the pain that they're in. You don't say, oh, it's okay. Like, yeah, all, some of those calls should close. Like, no, like they need to understand that this is serious. And, uh, and so it's like, okay, so I hear you. So just to make sure that I understand it, it sounds like what you're telling me is that you don't have any sales yet. And they say, oh yeah, you're right. And then it's like, okay. And then you keep going on with the questions. You know, you write that down in your notes, keep going on with the questions that you're asking about their current situation. You reveal some more pain, you repeat it back to them in a painful yet truthful manner, right? And when it comes time to prescribe the offer, when, when it comes time to, you know, once we flesh out all the pain and, and, I, and I look at it and I realize like, okay, what I do can definitely help with this, uh, I tell them that. You know, if, if that's the truth, if it looks like what I do can't help, then I tell them that and I refer them to somebody who I think can help. And that's it. At that point, the call is done, right? But if I can help, I tell them. And I say, I can definitely help uh, with where you're at. Uh, would you like me to share a little bit about what it is that I do? And they say yes. Uh, then we start to go into the offer. And I say, okay, well, what we do is... Um, you know, there's a three pillar approach or it might be four pillar or, you know, two pillar approach, depending on whatever it is that you do and what are the main, you know, the main, the main gears in the system, so to speak, of how you get clients from A to B. Um, and so in this scenario, when I'm describing these pillars, when I'm describing what it is that I do, I tie each one to one of those pain points. So the first one. It's like, okay, so the first pillar, it's gonna be the sales process itself. And then they're like, okay, and it's like, so remember remember when I asked you what your sales looked like this month and, and you basically said that you don't have any, you're not getting any sales. You got some calls, but you're not, but you're not getting any sales. And it's like, yeah. Okay, well, pillar one, so I, I remind them of that pain point. And then I tell them what the first pillar is. And I say, okay, so pillar one, sales process. What this is about is getting you crystal clear on how to take prospects from A to B without feeling salesy, where you're actually helping them and, and, and have you be able to do it in a systematic way. So you don't even have to think about it when you're doing it. You can literally just go in there and be able to help people and, and do it like clockwork. 
and close and have people happy that you close. And then I follow it up with, does this sound like it's something that would help? And at this point, they've been reminded of the pain that they're currently in and they see that this thing that you just shared is a possible solution. And if they say yes, which I've never had somebody say no, to be honest, when you do this correctly, uh, they say, yeah, it does sound like it would help. And then you say, how so? How so? How do you think it would help? And then you shut up and you let them talk because now you're directing their train of thought, getting them to focus on how this thing is going to help with that problem that they know that they have. And then they start telling you how it's going to help. At this point, this is when the prospect is literally selling themselves on the idea of how what you have is going to get them out of the situation that they're stuck in. And then once that's all said and done, you're like, okay, cool. We can move on to the next pillar if you're ready. And they say yes. And then you just literally rinse and repeat the same process for those main pain points that you bring up. And, and this is how you prescribe an offer. You prescribe it just like a doctor who's prescribing medicine. When you go to a doctor, they never just say, here's the meds you need. That's not, that's not how they do things. They look at all of your information. They look at your pain. They look at your symptoms and what you have going on. And they say, I know what can help. And then they give you whatever medication or regimen or prescription that they give you. They tell you about it so you understand it, you understand how to use it. And then you say, okay, then they prescribe it. And, and when you do that, you always feel like the doctor helped you because they did. And you thoroughly understand how. The main thing here is that the prospect thoroughly understands how what you have will help them. At this point, when they jump into your program, your course, your service, whatever it is that you're offering, it's now their idea and they're happy to hand you whatever money that they have, whatever you're charging, so that you can solve this problem for them. I hope this makes sense and I hope this brought some value to you guys. And, and uh, if you guys want some more value like this, if you want some more tips on sales training, um, uh, for me, I have a free Facebook community. The link's down in the description below. If you got some value, make sure that you like and subscribe to this channel. We're going to be uploading videos every week all about sales, the sales process, mindset involved, and how to be able to grow your service, coaching, or consulting business and, and really scale it. So I hope you guys are having an awesome day. I'll talk to you next time. Peace. So that's it. Just a nice, quick audio for you guys today. I hope you got some value from that. I hope uh, you got some tips that will be able to help you move forward and close more sales, but do it effectively where you're actually helping people. And like I said, towards the end of that audio, there's a link for my Facebook group in the description of this episode. So if you want to join a community of like-minded people that are all moving forward and doing the same thing, you want more tips from me, or, or maybe you just want to connect personally, you can go to that uh, link and request to join. Also, I'll leave a link to my YouTube channel in case you just want to watch these videos instead of listen to them here on the podcast. But other than that, hope you got some value. See you guys next time. Peace.